Hey guys, Matt with Kentucky Range Time and continuing our 8.6 blackout <clears throat> ballistic gel block testing with the Barnes 210 grain TTSX all copper bullet. And uh, I've got a couple of supersonic loadings I'm getting ready to, to, uh, to, to put out videos on, actually three total. And uh, it's the 210, the 160 Barnes TTSX, and I've got another video on the uh, Horner DCX uh, 225 grain. So this is a, a look at the bullet and this thing is a pretty massive chunk of copper and uh, we'll get turned around here and take a look at the loading and then we'll head on out to the range. All right guys, and here's a look at the loading. So I've uh, been using CCI large rifle primers, uh, Gorilla 8.6 blackout brass. And this brass seems to be doing pretty well. Um, neck tension is very low on this, I've noticed even after resizing uh, fire forming and resizing the neck tension is still still a lot less on this than it is on the converter brass that I've been running and uh, Here's a good look at the, the loaded rounds You can see here about how much of the bullets down in the case. It's down just past the neck and Barnes TTSX and Accurate 1680 on the powder and this is the same powder and primers that I've used on uh, all these supersonic loadings that we're getting ready to go through here. So let's uh, let's get on out to the range and see what it does. All right, guys, one quick note. Uh, I was having some camera difficulties on my extra camera uh, on a couple of these next videos. Uh, my, my gel block camera, my slow-mo camera, uh, was totally out of focus on a couple of different uh, video sets that I did. And... Uh, you know, we can still see what's going on in the gel block uh, as far as the temporary wound channel. It's just not as clear as what the, what the footage I normally get up is. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see how this one did. All right, guys, next up is the uh, the Barnes TTSX and 210 grain. And uh, this is my first loading on this bullet. So I'm checking for velocity here, looking for overpressure signs and just trying to get a baseline velocity in the Garmin. Barnes TTSX, 210 grain, shot number one. Twenty twenty three on the velocity. All right, guys, wound track for this round uh, starts right here. And just inside the gel block, about an inch and a half or two, we got some blue polymer tip that goes on down. We get very little expansion on this round until we get down here close to the second block. And then it does look like we've got some expansion coming in. And then that bullet impacts the steel plate back here, right in this area, and just splatters. All these little pieces of copper splattered out of that round and actually there's a chunk laying on the table as well and another chunk back here so uh, may try to clean some of these out of here and then run another one of these and see what it does as well all right guys so uh first round we got 32 inches of penetration very little expansion there was uh, some pieces of uh, blue ballistic tip about two inches in and then a lot more ballistic tip back there. Looks like most of the ballistic tip stayed intact all the way back to the steel plate and it just fractured and squirted lead or copper out everywhere. Let's, uh, let's try another one of these. Take 
a look at this piece of brass. Ever so slightly, I do have a swipe mark on here from the ejector. Primer doesn't look bad at all, but I've got that little ejector swipe. So, uh, 2023, very consistent SDs on this one. Uh, 3.5 foot per second between the first two rounds. Uh, let me shoot one more of these into the back stop to get a velocity averages here. Seventeen, so their three shot average is 2023 with the standard deviation of 5.1 foot per second. All right, guys, wound track starting right here, and this one actually did open up so. In about an inch and a half, about two, three inches, we had full expansion. You can see the blue polymer tip right there. And this wound channel right here is what we have. We've got about, uh, take off three inches at the front and five inches at the back. We've got eight inches of substantial wound channel here. This, this did really well. And after that, we still had enough energy left to carry us all the way back and impact into the plate, or just short of the plate. Here's a good look at our round. Uh, I don't think this one made the plate. Honestly, let's find out. We'll have a little brass mark on it if we did. All right, it might have barely touched the plate and sucked back in, maybe on one corner there. But uh, this guy's right here is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna fire, actually, I, I put the other one in the backstop. I should have checked this first. Uh, I'm gonna put one more in here and see what kind of expansion we get. All right, also something I've noticed here, we've got a couple of pieces of copper here about seven inches in uh, that split off this after it did expand. So. We did get some uh, some fragments early on as well, along with that blue polymer tip. All right, guys, so uh, I put that last round in the backstop to get my velocity, and I probably should have put it in the gel because I got completely different results with the second round in the gel block than I did with the first round in the gel block. So uh, uh, I had really good expansion fairly quick with that, and plus 32 inches of penetration. So uh, I had some fragments coming off, some creating some bleeders. So I'm gonna put another one of these in the gel block just to see what we're doing here. Looks like I might've lost the legs on my table. Uh, yeah. All right, guys, so uh, this is our wound track for the third TTSX that I've put in the gel block. We did not get good expansion on the first one, but the second one, which is back here, this is the second wound track here, and this is the latest wound track here. So you can see the blue polymer tip right here again. Uh, expansion was a little bit quicker this time to start, but didn't open up hardly as fast. Uh, we go down. We're open now and we start tracking a little funky here. It comes across, comes through, angles down, and almost skims off the table and then comes back up. So this is what we've got right here. This is uh, uh, 16 and half of this is eight, so that's 24. That's about 27 inches of expansion, 27, 28 inches of expansion. And that is a good looking bullet right there. So. These TTSX bullets, uh, the more I shoot them, the better they get. So the first one didn't open up. It actually impacted the plate. 
second one opened up and stopped just short of the plate and this one opened up and stopped about five inches away from the plate so just a, a really good supersonic loading here guys and i will note unlike the other rounds i don't see any maybe one little piece of copper fragment back here but other than that it looks like this one retained almost all of its weight I'll, uh, I'll weigh this when I get back to the shop and we'll see exactly how much of that 210 grains it retained. All right, guys, and uh, here's the aftermath. Uh, you know, all these pieces and parts. I got all these things dug out. So the first round that, that actually blew all the way through 32 inches of gel block with uh, practically no expansion, uh, slammed into the plate on the back of the, uh, behind the gel blocks and basically just shattered itself. Uh, looks a lot like what you would get from a lead bullet traveling that distance. Uh, I was kind of concerned at that point, but uh, the follow-up shots in uh, two and three, and I think maybe I had one to go out of the block on that. But uh, So we had a right at three quarters expansion on this one here, and uh, right at 0.7 inches of expansion on that one. So that's pretty good expansion, guys. And, you know, we, we drove these in deep, one of them actually almost went 32 inches as well, uh, but with the expansion. And uh, these things opened up a little bit later uh, than some of the other bullets that, that we tested in supersonic loading. So, you know, they opened late. We had good expansion on two of these, and we had good penetration on it. So, uh, you know, that's uh, if that's what you're looking for, then, uh, you know, then, then this bullet's going to give it. Now, the 160 that... that the video will be coming up on it shortly as well. Uh, we had similar results from it, except it opened a little bit quicker than the uh, than the 210 did. And uh, But we still had uh, some decent expansion on it, and we still got that thing to drive in pretty deep. So go check out that video as well. Uh, velocities on these were running, I think, just over 1,900 foot per second and almost 1,800 foot-pounds of energy uh, at the muzzle. So, uh, you know, pretty significant round here. Uh, out to probably 150, 200 yards, this thing would be absolutely devastating. So, That's right, guys. There you got it. The, uh, the Barnes TTSX 210 grain in 8.6 blackout. And, uh, you know, everybody talks about 8.6 being a, a sub round. And, you know, and, and, and I'm doing the same thing. I, I'm running the 350 grain Rex and the 342 grain Gorilla Punisher as well. Uh, and I will be putting those through my silencer here on, on some follow-up episodes later on. Uh, but this is going to be a pretty devastating supersonic loading as well. And, uh, you know, subsonic's not going to be the only meat that this rifle is going to be able to uh, to put out. So uh, keep an eye on this. You know, if you're planning on running this caliber, don't overlook some of these really good supersonic loadings on this. So... Guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Matt from Kentucky Range Time. We'll catch you on the next one.